Welcome to Grace Bible Church. Every week at this point in the service, we stop and we follow Jesus' example and instructions in the Lord's Supper by taking a piece of bread and a cup of juice. On the night before he died, Jesus was in the upper room celebrating the Passover with the disciples. Please open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. And if you don't have a Bible, we have some extra copies here. Just raise your hand. And if you don't have a Bible, the men will put, put one in your hand. And if you don't have a Bible at all, this is yours to keep. So you can have your own copy of God's word. Let's read Paul's description of Jesus establishing this meal of remembrance and proclamation we call the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 25. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Paul then summarizes for the church what we do each time we eat this bread and drink the cup. Look down and read the familiar but precious words of 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six with me. He says, as often as you eat this bread, and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So today, May 8th, 2022, we proclaim something together that happened almost 2,000 years ago. A historical fact that occurred, we look back. And we do this also simultaneously looking forward until he returns at a time in the future that only the Father knows. You see what's happening here? In order to glorify the Lord in our lives today, Jesus planned that the church should get our eyes periodically off the now and look back to Jesus in remembrance and look forward in time to his return. We look back at and forward at two of the most staggering and significant events in all of history, the death and return of our Lord. The first, to purchase and purify his church with his blood. The second, to claim us. Look at Colossians 1.22. He has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death in order to present you before him, holy and blameless beyond reproach. And in comparison to the many thousand years gap between Jesus' death and his return, our short life is put in perspective. It's revealed to be really short. And then compared to the eternity with him that his death secured, this earthly life is actually shown to be infinitely short. And we need this perspective. Apart from looking back at the cross and looking forward to Jesus' return, apart from this perspective, our present can threaten to overwhelm. Extremely cer difficult circumstances can seem to have no end. Temptations to sin are hard to endure. They just feel long. Current events that are amplified by the 24-hour news cycle, like wars, elections, politics, persecutions, we need proper perspective on those. Health struggles, loss of a loved one, chronic pain, difficult relationships, school, jobs, how to pay the bills, or maybe it's the riches, power, comfort, success that tempt you to keep your eyes on the here and now that we need to see rightly. Whatever it is that's calling for your attention today, this week, that's going to distract you tomorrow, anything that's distracting you from faithful living 
it's helpful to see from this back at the cross, forward to return in light of eternity perspective that we get when we take the Lord's Supper. For the Christian, there is so much help in this meal. Here's a few benefits that the Bible offers. There are many more. I'm going to flash the verses on the screen as I just state the benefits that looking back at the cross and forward to Jesus bring. Hebrews 11.25, the pleasures of sin are seen as truly fleeting. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 17, long trials are revealed to be slight and momentary in comparison to the incomparable weight of glory for which they are preparing us. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, we can endure in holiness with our eyes set on Jesus who endured the cross so that we don't grow weary and lose heart. Romans 8, 23 through 25, looking to that which we don't see, looking back to the cross and forward to his return with perseverance, we eagerly wait for adoption as sons and daughters, the redemption of our bodies. 2 Corinthians 4.18, we realize that the things we see with our physical eyes are transient, but the things that are not seen, but we believe with all our heart, these are those that are eternal. Revelation 21, three through four, a day is coming very soon when God will dwell with his people. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will no longer be any death, no longer be any mourning, crying, or pain. The first things will have passed away. And Peter summarizes our blood-bought hope that helps us endure now while we look forward to Jesus' return. 6-9 of 1 Peter chapter 1, 6-9. through nine. He says, In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Christian, it's right to pause each week and set the eyes of your heart on Jesus, who died for your sins on the cross 2,000 years ago and has been raised, is in heaven, will return, will judge, and then will be with his people reigning into eternity. Your day to day, even the entirety of your life is put into sweet perspective by those bookends and what they point us to. But if you're not a Christian, if you're here hearing this and you have not put your faith in Jesus alone, you should not get any comfort from looking back to the cross and looking forward to Jesus' return if you have not trusted in his death for forgiveness of sins, if you have not turned from those sins, submitted your entire life to Jesus in faith, if you have any other hope besides Jesus for right standing before God, Jesus' return should not be a comfort to you. It should terrify you. 2 Thessalonians 1.8 describes Jesus' return for you if you remain in this rebellious, faithless condition. These are God's words, not mine. He will return, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord. And these will pay the penalty of our eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes to be glorified in his saints on that day and to be marveled at among all those who have believed. So please turn to Jesus. This life is short but significant. Your life has been one of sin, earning the just wrath of God that will be poured out for you in all of eternity. 
But when you look back to the cross now, you see the perfect son of God dying, not for his own sins, but to pay that debt of sin for all who would believe. What you, what I, what every human would rightly suffer for all of eternity for, Jesus paid for all who would turn and believe. So turn and believe. Do not leave here without putting your faith in Jesus. Now, if you do believe, take the bread and juice when it comes. And if you don't, just let it pass when it comes. And Christian, let's marvel together. Look back at the cross. Look forward to his return and have this privilege of remembering and proclaiming Jesus' death on our behalf. Men, please serve us. Take it on your own when you're prepared.